Although Hollywood's golden age ended more than 50 years ago, some legends have stood the test of time. Shocking, right? Not only are these stars still alive, but they are actively active in the profession. The entertainment industry brought the golden age to an end, yet these actors survived by adapting and accepting TV roles. While some of these celebrities may be older than those on this list, they have either been retired for decades or had brief careers. Stay tuned as we delve into the oldest living stars you never knew were still alive. The first on our list today is none other than American actor, comedian, director, composer, and playwright Melvin James Brooks was born on June 28, 1926. Over the course of seven decades, Brooks has become famous as the creator and director of numerous critically acclaimed broad comedies and parodies. He is one of just 19 performers in history to receive the EGOT, which stands for Extraordinary Achievement in Television, and he has received other honors including Grammy, Tony, and Emmy. Among his many accolades are a 2009 Kennedy Center Honor, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2010, the AFI Life Achievement Award in 2013, a fellowship from the British Film Institute in 2015, a National Medal of Arts in 2016, a fellowship from the British Academy of Film and Television Arts in 2017, and the Honorary Academy Award in 2024. Animation voiceovers have also been provided by Brooks, he provided the voice of master inventor Big Weld in the 2005 animated feature Robots and had a brief appearance as Albert Einstein in the 2014 feature Mr. Peabody and Sherman. In Hotel Transylvania 2 and Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation 2018, he made a triumphant return, lending his voice to Vlad, Dracula's father. During the last number of Young Frankenstein, the entire company sings, Next year, Blazing Saddles. The concept of a musical adaptation of Blazing Saddles was joked about by Brooks. The announcement of a creative team or plan was made in 2010. However, Brooks has since affirmed that the musical might be finished within a year. Brooks released her autobiography, All About Me, in 2021, when she was 95 years old. Hulu will air a television series based on Brooks's 1981 film, History of the World, Part 2, which he will write and produce, according to an announcement made on October 18, 2021. The role of narrator in the series garnered him a nomination for the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Character Voiceover Performance. Another oldest living star that has stood the rest of time is Karen Marsh Dole, whose birth name was Morris and who was born on April 6, 1919, is a dancer and actress who has performed on stage and screen over her career in the United States. She specializes in modern dance and tap dance. Her role as a stand-in for Judy Garland in the films The Wizard of Oz and Ziegfeld Girl has brought her a great deal of attention. Among the actors who have survived from the golden age of Hollywood, she is one of the few of her kind. Marsh was a member of the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer film staff from 1937 until 1948, during which time he had a number of film appearances, including a brief uncredited role in the film Gone with the Wind. In 1956, she began her career as a dance instructor. She was born to a stockbroker who worked in Hollywood. In addition to her family, she was an active member of the Methodist Church. In 1937, she received her diploma from Hollywood High School with the intention of pursuing a career in acting. Her mother and father did not agree with this decision and recommended that she continue her education at a college or university. They reached a compromise by informing Karen that she would be required to attend school if she was unable to secure a career in the performing industry. The year 1957 marked Marsh's relocation to Palm Springs, California, when she wed Bill Doll, a publicity agent who was employed by theater and film director Mike Todd. Doll passed away in 1979. Her 100th birthday was in April of 2019. Dorothy Morris, her younger sister, was an actress who worked in both film and television. 
Marsh is a volunteer that teaches dance therapy at the Palm Springs Stroke Activity Center on the first Monday of every month. The styles that are taught there include ballroom dancing, country dancing, Hawaiian dancing, and belly dancing, among others. She attends the Palm Springs United Methodist Community Church on a regular basis and is an active member there. Ray Anthony is a distinguished American musician who was born on January 20th, 1922. He is a band leader, trumpeter, lyricist, and actor. As the last surviving member of the Glenn Miller Orchestra, he is the only current member. In addition to his role as himself in the film Daddy Longlegs, which was released in 1955, Anthony served as the musical director of the television series Top Tunes from 1953 to 1954. The music score for the film This Could Be the Night was recorded by Anthony and his orchestra in 1957. Julie Wilson provided the vocals for the score. Among the works that Anthony has composed are Mr. Anthony's Boogie, Big Band Boogie, Trumpet Boogie, The Bunny Hop, and Thunderbird. Anthony was a close friend of Hugh Hefner, who passed away, and he starred in a number of episodes of the television show The Girls Behind the Door. Donna Mae Chardon, better known by her stage name Janice Page, was born on September 16, 1922. She is a retired American singer and actor. She is one of the few stars from the golden age of Hollywood who is still active today having had a career that has lasted for almost 60 years. On September 16, 1922, Paige was born as Donna Mae Jardin in Tacoma, Washington. She was the only child of Hazel Lear, Nay Simmons, and George S. Jardin, and she was predominantly of Norwegian, German, English, and Cornish origin. At the age of five, she participated in local amateur performances and began singing in front of an audience. Immediately following her graduation from high school, she relocated to Los Angeles, where she was subsequently employed to perform as a vocalist at the Hollywood Canteen during World War II. The pilots of the United States Army Air Forces, who flew the P-61 Black Widow, chose her to be their Black Widow Girl when the battle was going on. She expressed her gratitude by posing like a pin-up model while wearing a costume that was suitable for the occasion. During the year 2017, Page contributed a guest essay to The Hollywood Reporter, in which she revealed that Alfred Bloomingdale had made an attempt to rape her when she was 22 years old. After being enticed inside Bloomingdale's apartment under false pretenses, she claims that she was subjected to sexual assault upon entering the flat. In the year 2022, Page reached the age of 100. Eva Marie Sant is a well-known American film and television actress who was born on July 4, 1924 in Newark, New Jersey, United States. She is renowned for her ability to add emotional depth and complexity to her performances, in which she typically portrayed women who may appear weak but had a great deal of inner power. Saint made her debut in the film On the Waterfront, 1954, in which she played the role of Edie Doyle, the sister of a slain dock worker who had received her education in a convent. She was also the love interest of the protagonist, who was portrayed by Marlon Brando. Because of her emotionally touching performance, she was awarded the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. She received a second Emmy nomination for her portrayal of Emily in a televised musical version of Thornton Wilder's Our Town, 1954, on Producers Showcase, which also featured Paul Newman and Frank Sinatra. First, Saint was nominated for an Emmy Award for her performance in the televised play The Middle of the Night, which was written by Paddy Chayefsky and performed in 1954 as part of the Philco Goodyear Television Playhouse series. Additionally, Saint appeared alongside Bob Hope in the comedy That Certain Feeling, 1956, and she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for her role in the dramatic picture A Hatful of Rain, 1957. Both of these films were released in 1956. Saint was most frequently seen in films that were broadcast on television, 
Her performance as Edith Wilson in the television movie The First Woman President, 1974, garnered her a nomination for an Emmy Award. In 1978, she appeared alongside Martin Sheen in The Two-Hander Taxi, which won her a nomination for an Emmy Award. The miniseries Fatal Vision had her as the mother of a murder victim, and the television series Moonlighting included her as the mother of the character played by Sybil Shepherd. Both of these roles were roles that she played often. Dominic Dunn's novel, People Like Us, served as the inspiration for Saint's portrayal in the miniseries People Like Us, which earned her an Emmy Award. In the 21st century, she made appearances in a number of films, such as I Dreamed of Africa, because of Win dixie Superman Returns, and Winter's Tale. Additionally, she provided the voice for a character in the animated television series The Legend of Korra. Dick Van Dyke is a well-known American actor and comedian who was born on December 13, 1925, in West Plains, Missouri, United States. He is especially well known for his amiable charm, comedic timing, and loose-limbed physical humor. The long popularity of the television show, The Dick Van Dyke Show, 1961-1966, can be attributed, in part, to the characteristics described above. While Van Dyke was still in high school, he was first exposed to the world of theater. Van Dyke was born and raised in Danville, Illinois. In the course of his duty in the United States Army Air Forces during World War II, he worked as a radio announcer and then went on to act in service shows while he was there. Nevertheless, following his discharge from the military in 1946, he established an advertising agency in Danville. After the failure of that endeavor a year later, he decided to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. The film Dick Tracy, directed by Warren Beatty, featured Van Dyke in the year 1990. The next year, he appeared as a guest star in the crime series Jake and the Fat Man, playing the role of Dr. Mark Sloan. This led to the production of two television films based on the character in the year 1992. After that, he went on to star in the popular drama series Diagnosis Murder, co-starring with his son once more. His latest film credits include Night at the Museum and Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. Both of these films will be released in 2014. After then, Van Dyke had a cameo appearance in Mary Poppins Returns, 2018, playing the role of Mr. Dawes Jr., a descendant of Mr. Dawes Sr., the character that he had previously portrayed in the original show. It was in 1995 that he was admitted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame, and it was in 2021 that he was awarded a Kennedy Center honor. Alan Greenspan is an American economist who was born on March 6, 1926, in New York City, New York, United States. He is now the chairman of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, a position he held from 1987 to 2006. During his tenure as chairman, Greenspan served through the administrations of four different presidents of the United States. When Greenspan was only five years old, he exhibited his mathematical prowess by reciting baseball batting averages and calculating massive computations in his head. When he was younger, he attended the Juilliard School for Music Students and was a member of the Henry Jerome Band, where he played the clarinet and jazz saxophone. He earned his bachelor's degree in economics from New York University in 1948 and his master's degree in 1950. After that, he started his doctoral studies at Columbia University, where he was taught by Arthur F. Burns, an economist who would later become the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. In 1952, he became acquainted with the controversial novelist Ayn Rand and joined her inner circle. He also adopted her philosophy of extreme self-interest and laissez-faire capitalism following his encounter with her. In order to fulfill the term of Paul A. Volcker as chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, Greenspan was appointed by President Ronald Reagan of the United States of America. Greenspan began office on August 11, 1987. Greenspan became well known for his determined use of monetary policy during the years that he served as chairman of the Federal Reserve. 
he was able to manage the economy between the risks of recession and inflation successfully. He moved swiftly to guarantee that there was sufficient liquidity in the markets after the Dow Jones Industrial Average had a record-breaking drop of 508 points on October 19th, shortly after he took over as chairman of the Federal Reserve. As a means of providing economic support to the Asian nations that were experiencing a financial crisis and an economic slowdown beginning in 1997, for further information see Asian Financial Crisis, he decreased interest rates in the United States. In June of 1999, he began a series of interest rate hikes, which became more frequent as the economies of Asia began to recover and the economy of the United States maintained its steady expansion. Aside from that, he brought to the attention of the general public what he referred to as unsustainable rates of growth in the economy of the United States of America and overextended stock values towards the end of the 20th century. In January of 2006, Greenspan stepped down from his position as chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. The former American journalist, television personality, film and book reviewer, and author, Eugene Chalit, was born on March 25, 1926. He is also a television personality, following his initial part-time employment on NBC's The Today Show in 1970, he continued to serve in those capacities until his retirement on November 11, 2010. He left his position on January 15, 1973. The fact that he wears colorful bow ties, his big handlebar mustache, and his fuzzy hair as well as his frequent use of puns are all things that have made him famous. Between the years 1950 and 1978, Shalit was married to Nancy Lewis. Nancy Lewis passed away from cancer in 1978. The majority of his professional life was spent in Leonia, New Jersey, but as of the year 2012, he was identified as a resident of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, rather than Leonia. Following his review of Brokeback Mountain, in which he referred to Jake Gyllenhaal's role as a sexual predator, Shalit was subjected to criticism from the guy and lesbian alliance against defamation, GLAD. GLAD pointed out that Shalit's baseless branding of Jack as a sexual predator merely because he is romantically interested in someone of the same sex is defamatory, ignorant and irresponsible in addition to suggesting he used the occasion to promote defamatory anti-gay prejudice to a national audience. His son, Peter, who is gay, wrote a letter to Glad in which he defended his father and stated that the organization had defamed him by falsely accusing him of a repulsive form of bigotry. On October 24, 2012, Shalit was driving in Lenox, Massachusetts, when he fell asleep behind the wheel and caused a collision with his vehicle. Due to the fact that he committed to refrain from driving until the dismissal, the misdemeanor charges of careless driving to endanger were eventually dropped. Additionally, he was had to adhere to a safety condition that was accepted by both his attorney and the head of police. Lee Grant is a well-known American actress, documentarian and director. She was born Lyova Haskell Rosenthal on October 31st, around the middle of the 21st century. After making her debut in the film industry in 1951 with the role of a young shoplifter in William Wyler's detective story, Grant was nominated for an Academy Award in the category of Best Supporting Actress. She also received the award for Best Actress at the Cannes Film Festival in 1952 for her performance in Shampoo 1975, in which she played Warren Beatty's older girlfriend Grant was awarded the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. During her time on the blacklist, Grant had roles in a few small television shows, as well as a handful of plays and two feature films, among other productions. In 1953, she performed the character of Rose Peabody in the soap opera Search for Tomorrow. Prior to that, she had appeared in supporting roles in the film plays Storm Fear in 1955 and Middle of the Night in 1959. On stage, Grant was a leading actor in the production of Two for the Seesaw that was staged on Broadway. 
In 1959, she took over for Anne Bancroft as the leading female character in the film. She appeared in the romantic drama Middle of the Night in the same year, playing a supporting role in the film. For her performance as Warren Beatty's elder lover in the 1975 film Shampoo, Grant was awarded the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. In Columbia's 50-year history, the film was the studio's most successful release to date. Hairspray was the second picture that Grant appeared in while working under the direction of Hal Ashby. Pauline Kael, a film critic, made the observation that Grant is such a cool style comedienne that she's in danger of having people say that she's good, as usual. Kyle made this observation in reference to her performance in both films. Nevertheless, she did have some significant issues with Beatty, who was also the producer while the film was being filmed, and she came awfully close to quitting. During one of the scenes, she tried to play it in a manner that she believed would be more authentic from the point of view of a woman, but Beatty did not agree with her. She informed the director Ashby that she was leaving the production because she could not do it Beatty's way and that she was departing after thinking about the sequence for a few days. Beatty apprehended her as she was leaving and inquired about the reason for her departure. She said, I sat down and told him, and she was right. Play it your way, he murmured as he raised his palms in that direction. Just what do I know? This is a man. As the 39th President of the United States, 1977-1981, Jimmy Carter was born in Plains, Georgia, in the United States on October 1, 1924. He served as the country's chief executive during a period of time when the country was facing significant challenges both domestically and internationally. The landslide defeat that he suffered in his attempt for re-election was a direct result of his perceived failure to adequately deal with those complications. Nevertheless, in 2002, he was honored with the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts in the fields of diplomacy and advocacy, which he had undertaken both during and after his administration. During the year 1974, just prior to the conclusion of his tenure as governor, Carter made the announcement that he would be running for the Democratic nomination for president. Through diligent and methodical campaigning, he was able to amass a large number of supporters, despite the fact that he did not have a national political base or substantial sponsorship. In the aftermath of the Watergate scandal, which had raised widespread concern about the power of the presidency and the integrity of the executive branch, Carter styled himself as an outsider to Washington, D.C., a man of strong principles who could restore the faith of the American people in their leaders. Ironically, Carter's moral position and candor produced a little disturbance when, during the campaign, he acknowledged in an interview with Playboy magazine that he had committed adultery in his heart many times. This admission generated a small stir. Carter was able to push through significant legislation during his final months in office. This legislation established Superfund to clean up abandoned toxic waste dumps and also set aside almost 100 million acres, 40 million hectares of land in Alaska to safeguard it from development. Additionally, Carter would be noted for his inclusion of women and members of minority groups in his cabinet. Among these individuals was Andrew Young, an African-American who had previously served as the mayor of Atlanta. Young was also the United States ambassador to the United Nations, a position that was both prominent and controversial. Carter's books, The Virtues of Aging, 1998, and A Full Life. Reflections at 90, 2015, are collections of his thoughts on the lessons he has learned from his long life and the passage of time. Which of these legendary celebrities is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up for more thrilling contents like this. Till next time, stay golden.